We all know about Gutenberg and his Bible, but did you know that it was a dismal failure, leaving him completely bankrupt? Two short years later, his creditors took over the business and formed the world's first book publishing company. That's right, moneylenders founded the publishing industry. Not am I not surprised, but also I am Evo Terra. And this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Moriarty and welcome to another episode of the Books and Beer Hangout. Our title tonight is Firing Your Publisher and Embracing the World of Self-Publishing. We have a guest tonight who has done that in spectacular fashion. I'll let him introduce himself, his credentials, and tell us what he is drinking tonight. Mr. Nathan Lowell. Howdy, howdy. Um, what I'm drinking tonight is uh, coffee. Uh, I, I wish it were beer, but it's coffee. Um, I've been around here before. Some of you know me from my uh, science fiction and my fantasy, and um, I write for a living. What more can I say? It's a great way to start it off. Jeff? Well, uh, so I am drinking this evening. I'm a big fan of the stouts, especially in cold weather, and I went to the fridge and I had a uh, Old Rasputin, which is not only a... Uh, a great beer. But I looked at that picture and I'm like, you know, there's a certain amount of Nathan Lowell right there in, in Rasputin. Wow. I thought a little bit, a little bit crazy, a little bit mad, you know, ideas all over the place. Rasputin, this worked. So it's a very thematic beer. It toast to you, sir. And for me, I'm not drinking um, anything like an old Rasputin, but I'm still drinking more of the Pallet Wrecker than I had last time because I bought two cases of this, and I really need to drink it, and that's not a problem. Uh, and, and I certainly will, I will, I will, I will. So, with that, another drink. All right, you ready to go now? I'm ready to go now. All right, so, Nathan, you know when I've known each other for a while, you've had the history of being here with us before, um... You started out life as a as a self-published author back when you weren't even publishing. You were self-publishing in, in audio form, and then you went the with a publisher route to put the books out in, in various marketplaces and stuff. So I'm curious, what made you sign up with a publisher in the first place? Well, I was on my way to self-publish in print uh, when I was intercepted uh, by a small press. And they, it, it took several times, it took several uh, conversations to convince me that uh, we could do better together than I could do by myself, which was basically the, the question that is, is the key one as far as I'm concerned. Um, they convinced me that uh, by signing with them, I would uh, have a better reach, I would have better visibility, and at that point, we're talking late 2009, early 2010, uh, the self-publishing stigma was still quite strong. Mm -hmm. So it offered a fig leaf of uh, respectability, which in, in many ways paid off quite well. And so I signed with them to get the editing, to get some good covers. I liked their covers. Um, I got some uh, marketing support so that they handled all of the catalog. They handled all of the acquisition of money and uh, taking of orders and disbursement of um, physical and electronic goods. And I thought that would be something that would, would free me up and not part of my critical mission, which was to produce more content. So it, it seemed at the time to be a very good deal. And part of that deal uh, was the contract terms, which were very advantageous. Um, my split was twice theirs, which is somewhat unusual in publishing contracts. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, they offered a 30-day walk away, what they called the PETA clause, uh, if at any point in time either party thinks it's too much of a pain in the ass to work with the other, uh, offer in writing and all rights revert, no harm, no foul, no cause required. Just send me the letter, we'll call it off. And and, and obviously it was working out because you're a full-time writer. You You made not just money but a living wage under yeah. these terms. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to join the Hundred Thousand Club on Kindle here pretty quick. Uh, so I'll have sold. I'll have sold a hundred thousand units on Kindle. Uh, probably. Well, certainly with uh, with the release of Captain's Share, it'll break a hundred thousand units. Now I won't have done it by myself because all, many of those units were sold under um, the Ryden umbrella. But uh, still, it's not bad. I'll take it. Uh, we sold a lot of books. We've we moved a lot of product. We we um, we had a good reach, and we uh, we did a good job. Okay, so now that you're going to be going it alone, what are some of the downsides? What... Well, it's a, it's all me, and so like anybody who works for themselves, they've got a, a fool for an employee uh, and an idiot for a boss. So it's it's kind of difficult to to take a day off without the boss finding out about it. Um, down so you'll only be able to write a book every other day maybe or well I, I haven't I haven't written a new book uh, well I did Cypheria's Call uh, just released uh, a couple months ago uh, but that's the first thing I've put out since owner's share and so it's been uh, my prodigious output is as they say somewhat stifled at the moment um, but the it has less to do with the the onus of being a publisher, which has only been mine for about a month, uh, as much as all of the other things that go along with you know working for yourself and trying to be a writer and trying to do all of the stuff that goes along with being a a creative person in the marketplace today. And is so there there's one, a lot of that. Is there one particular thing you were most leery of taking on going solo? Uh, no, actually. Um, the the biggies and the things that I, I've talked to several other publishers and the, the biggies that publishers are are promoting are um, editing. It's like well you know editing is really not that big a deal. Editing is a matter of finding an editor and paying them, and and that's it. And so uh, editing is really not a big deal. Cover art. Oh, we could come up with great cover art. It's like mm, you know I've seen your covers. <laughs> um, no thanks. So uh, you know the the big things that you have to do when you're doing a publisher is uh, the big one is marketing. And for a lot of people I know, marketing is the big one. That's why they want to go with a publisher because a publisher will help them market. It will it will increase their reach. And because I started out on patio books, I know what kind of joke that is. And when you're working social media, when you're working in micro marketing, when you're working in niche marketing, which is what really, when you think about it, what a self publisher is doing is working in a niche. Um, you have to work your own niche. You have to build your own niche. And I've been doing that for five years, six years. Uh, so it wasn't, it wasn't, it held no uh, great fear for me. That was something like, okay, well, I can get back to doing what I've always done, which is, is work my niche and work my market and, and um, attend to my fans more directly without this intermediary of the publisher getting in the way and saying, oh yeah, we'll have a book out in May, but they don't say what year. Uh, <laughs> So, details, uh, details. yeah, it's the little details like that. And so now if there's a problem, it's me. If, if there's a problem, I don't have any, I don't have any issue going to the fan base and saying, all right, there's a problem. And the problem is me. Um, I spent a month in dental hell here this last month. Um, and I'm, I'm quite open about what's going on and how things work. I have a daily podcast. I tell people what I've not done in the last 24 hours and what I hope to do in the next 24. And then the next day I tell them what I didn't do again. And so uh, I think the, the big one that most people are afraid of is marketing. And the biggest problem is that most people are working on mass market models of, of marketing and not micro market. And they can't quite get their head around how do I reach 250,000 people? And the answer is you don't. There's no point to it uh, because of the 250,000 people, 12 of them are going to care. Uh, right. So what you really want to do is reach 50 people who care and let the rest of them worry about something else. Right, right. So I, I assume the answer to this question um, is that is well, I, I shouldn't assume. Let me, let me just ask. Out of all the things you've talked about, of all the realities that you've faced, and all of the things that publishers say they will do for you that you you either don't need them to do or they don't do very well, is there still an upside 
Is there a is there something that they do or, or should be doing that you're not doing that you, you wish you could offload onto a publisher? Um, for me, no. Uh, there is I can't I can't find an upside uh, in large part because of the contract terms. Uh, most publishing contract terms, um, the the revenue is so small that what you're paying for the re for their service uh, doesn't pay out. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the classic numbers, the the average mid list author sells five thousand units lifetime for a novel. Um, I sell five thousand units in the first month. Uh, after 5,000 units and the book comes off the shelf, if I go with a publisher and they're selling, you know, you look at the Amazon ranking for publishers uh, and most publishers are running Amazon ranks of 20 to 60,000 in ebook, higher for many of them because they don't understand the ebook market very well. Right. Um, mm. And you look at at the indies that are selling in the five thousand to eight thousand range, and you know they're outselling them. And it's not not strictly because of price; uh, it's just because they understand the market better. Um, so, from a, from that standpoint, I can't see an upside with going with a publisher right now. Which isn't to say that I don't talk to Random House. I don't talk to Amazon. I've, 40, I've talked to Forty Seven North. I've talked to Random House. I've talked to a couple of them, and they all are—they're—they're they're all very interesting, and they're all very interested. But the problem is that uh, for the 14 cents they're willing to pay me per unit, I, I really can't afford to take the deal. All right, so we're almost out of time. So I have one more question for you, because that conversation that you're talking about having that you are dismissing is what a lot of authors that I talk to are still dreaming of. They're looking at self-publishing, but they really want that because they know they're going to make the big money if they get a big publishing deal. But some of them are realizing it's not going to happen. They're going to go into self-publishing. So close out, what is your piece of advice for somebody who is now looking at the self-publishing route? I am going to self-publishing, and I should blank. Uh, work a community. Build a community. Build your niche. Um, look at micro-marketing tools and techniques and pay attention to social media as a channel for growing an audience, not as a channel for advertising your wares. Sage, sage advice um, as always, Nathan. Well, well, thank you very much. Uh, great, lo lots, lots of information. Just, just, just a quick rundown here at the end for you, Nathan. Um, rattle off the book titles that you have available where people can either buy them or get them for free. Um, for free in audio, quarter share, half share, full share, double share, captain share, owner share, South Coast, Ravenwood. Um, Zyferia's Call is the latest book. It's the second in the Tanith Fairport Adventures. It's not available on audio yet. I'm still in production with that, but I've been a little sandbagged by having to re-release the books that were available in print, and, and quarter share is now back available as an ebook as of yesterday, and I expect half share to be available in ebook on Amazon tomorrow or wow. maybe Saturday. Um, so if is call Ravenwood, um, A Light in the Dark, which is a novella, 99 cents, available on Amazon. Uh, for the moment, the best thing to do to find out what's available and where is to look me up at NathanLowell.com. If you're looking only for my science fiction, you can find that at SolarClipper.com. And the fantasy is at LamasWood.com. Learn more about the fantasy world of Tanith Fairport and her adventures. And being a non-fantasy fan, i got to say I'm really enjoying uh, Tanith's stories. They're all, always really enjoyable. Well, again, Nathan, thank you very much for being on the program with us today. Thank you for having me. So a couple of quick announcements as we wrap the show up here. Uh, ePublish Unum, we have some classes. Surprise, surprise. In fact, next Tuesday, we're recording our second, our part two of our free seminar on using some smart science -y tools to help you pick the right
right kind of title. And, ooh, spoiler, we're going to talk about how to use these tools to maybe figure out which book you should be writing next to. Uh, and, of course, as I mentioned last time around, our class will start up once again. January, we kick off both of our four-week and our six-week course. So uh, check out ePublishUnum.com for more information about that. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For a complete list of our educational offerings, including classes and workshops and those free seminars I just mentioned, please visit ePublishUnum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for watching.